That's a big question. Because, I mean, it was on a platform that uh, Professor uh, Shibaja said, look, as long as the police authorities cannot get fingerprints or some sort of identification for those who come in to the police, maybe to report, uh, I beg your pardon, those who are guilty or so suspects, yes. we're going to have major problems. And that's why government should see, I mean, seriously think about how to improve the method of policing in Nigeria. And that is where private policing will come in. What do you mean by private policing? I've been, you know, I've been trying to <laughs> deci decide for what exactly... The layman language so like for the private, private policing army? is private security. Oh, okay. Who, who owns that? How will it work? The way it is in the It US. could be owned by proprietary um, organization. It could be owned by a contract uh, organization, body C. But this is just like how government now invites private concern to participate in government. Private, public, pri private participation. You must have heard that. Private, public, public uh, participation in so many things. You have, you have to get things going. So also, if we are to actually secure ourselves very well, we need that private... Who's pri going uh, private to pay public. them? I mean, uh, how is it going to work? I mean, I wonder that if someone owns, say, we already see private security firms now, policing uh, firms and policing companies. Who's going to... Whose service... Or in what service would they be employed? Is a partnership, long way. Is a partnership. In other words, the government can actually hire private police. Exactly, they can hire private police. They can also invest into it. Now, if individual money bags can uh, contribute and donate fabulously to ensuring the, uh, a particular candidate to win election in Nigeria, <laughs> they can also invest into that. That's a worthwhile investment. Of making sure that private uh, uh, policy, you know, uh, you know, contribute their own quota but to the safeguard of that all be, the. Would uh, that uh, be fair? Because I mean, here <laughs> we are. We haven't exactly funded our own police as we should. It has. It's been grossly underfunded, and we're going to pay money to private we, police firms ma, ma, to ma, render the same service that possibly our own no, could provide. No, not the same service. You see. Deterrent. Talk about uh, terrorism and all the other high, you know, high class crimes. Those are meant for public policy because they are backed by law to do that. But we are talking about ordinary keeping our lives safe, like like what happened in Mubi now, for instance, is something that uh, you know private policy would have uh, averted. Talking about other petty thieves here and there. How would they have you know, averted this, it? These are things. That by investigation, by intelligence. It's not just by physical whatever, it's intelligence gathering. So these people are very proficient in gathering intelligence. And so when you gather intelligence, you, f you, you pass it on to public police who will now come with all the paraphernalia to, to guard, I mean, to use force when, when, the, when, when the need uh, calls for it. So uh, private police may not have the opportunity or may not have the power to use force, but Every other thing that has to do with prevention, they have it. You see, you agree with me that most of the problems we have with um, security today are a result of tele intelligence. When people are not informed of an impending danger, they do not know it comes to them unawares. What about if this thing had been, uh, if, or for instance, what happened in movie had been foretold maybe a day or two before then? Something is likely to happen here. Then the public police will come. We come on board. They, they would have uh, prevented this thing. But when there is an absence of that intelligence, all this thing will be happening. It is happening all over the world, and they have they, they are making a kind, a kind of judicious blend. And if Nigeria does that too, and like I told you earlier, on, you remember the duty of the police first and foremost to apprehend, make arrest, because you need an arrest. You need cogent and copious, you know, uh, evidence to show that you are working. But private police, there is to prevent. And that is where the real duty lies in Nigeria today, to prevent. So, so that we don't just go, we don't become reactive. Ours is proactive. Dr. Make sure that thing does not happen. <coughs> it's not after it has happened, you now run yet a skater. Because, you see, we can't afford again to, to be commiserating, to be telling those who lost their... You know, let's prevent these losses. Ours is to prevent losses Dr. and uh, safeguard asset. Dr. Degbulo, I, I don't know if you're aware of some of the persons that have greeted the employment of private security 
in in other climes. Okay. For instance, the United States. We saw what happened when the United States uh, security outfit invited private security outfits into Iraq, and we saw the backlash. We saw the protest that greeted that particular uh, move. Is that what we do? We hope to see that as well in Nigeria. No, not likely. It depends on the modus operandi. If you invite private police from your own um, uh, civilization to another civilization entirely without proper, you know, in, uh, proper uh, training as to the terrain and all that, you have problem. But I'm talking about domesticating our own private policing in order to do the work they know best to do. So but they know they some people, of the they understand their some of the comprisons, so some well of the comprisons and the protests was that these people were very well funded. They had better kits. Their salaries were way better, and the government was paying a lot of this money. Something that it could have pumped into its own army. Are you asking that the Nigeria government do exactly the same thing? I'm not saying that the government should die. I don't think they should fund it. I'm talking of recognition here. Recognition, and also if you talk about funding for that, there is no how the government today, anywhere in the world, can fund their public police, and that's why the private policy are actually, you know, coming on, even in the United States too. So the, 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 the money Yama for uh, community policing is shrinking by the day. And that's why the private policing is actually coming up. It's coming up by private initiative and those who have money to, to, to actually invest into governance, they are doing it and uh, you know they are able to stem so many ugly tides, which Nigeria also can borrow a leave from.